I think he can. He's got the size. He's got a little bit of length. He's got some experience, and he certainly is motivated coming into this fight. Rocco Santamoro knows it's probably his last chance to get a title shot at this level. And they're going to play for blood. That's just my game. <laughs> What have I walked into here? I, you, you don't even want to know, Mary. <laughs> we'll see you at high noon on that dirt road out back, Mary. <laughs> is this shot? See, Rocco's not going to be, be able to com compete with the speed and, and the technique of Galaba. He can be uh, throw the right shots, and, and that right hand to the gut is the right shot against a southpaw. And he does have the pop and the power to get the respect of a young Galaba. Keep it up. Keep it up. Santamaro, 36 years old, five years older than Yafai. Santamaro's, you know, not not a, a knockout puncher, but he's a strong puncher. You can see by his shoulders and his uh, upper body frame. He's a strong, strong fighter. You know, one thing Santamaro said to us this week was, even though he believes he won that fight against Santamaro, he understands that he left. You know, some of these rounds on the table a little bit. Didn't do just, didn't do Don't enough. Didn't do Don't as much it. as he wanted to do to win them definitively. So he's not going to make that same mistake in this fight tonight. He's the chief second for Rocco no, Santamaro. No. A bit of a trip there. Oh, nice right hand by Yafai. And Rocco is in trouble coming in. He sticks his tongue out. <laughs> you better stick some punches out. He's getting hit too cleanly right now. Lovely left hook there from Yafai. Just dipped the legs a little bit before he threw it. Said tomorrow's pro debut came 12 years before Galal Yafai's. Yafai's having success. They're going around the guard of Rocco Santamora right now. The left and right hooks are landing cleanly. He spoke about gapping in Yafai's defense for that uppercut through the middle. I think there's, there's an opportunity there for Yafai to throw exactly the same punch. Very, when you think about the smaller guys, at least historically, you don't think they're big hitters, but man, we saw in the first fight a one punch knockout, and these guys are letting him fly. I missed the trick, didn't I? A little bit. Oh! Shit, because of the lack of defense and head movement, Todd. You know, that, that's the reason these, these uh, non punchers are looking like devastating punchers because they're not rolling with the shots. And technique is a big thing. You know, the old grid fight, was, uh, as Sergio said, was perfect technique. Pushed off that back leg, didn't lose up. All body mechanics. And look, look at the strain in the neck of Rocco. He's so tense compared to your five. He's mm -hmm. just as cool as you like. Yeah, about to get it. Oh, good left. Caused Rocco to dip there. Rocco's kind of caught between styles. Should he fight off the back foot? Should he pressure? Should he fight low? He's trying to avoid punches. I, I think he's having a good go here. Because he's trying to keep that upper body movement. He's trying to make it. But yeah, if I look for the target here, and he's trying he try to match him for work rate, but he's not going to be able to do that. You know, I, I see what you're seeing, Barry. It's, it's got, kind of awkward, but it's successfully awkward on Rockwell's part. Nothing's landing cleanly for your five, but, you know, he's, he's, he's ah! inching his way in. The countenance of Rocco is telling the story here. Watch your hand. There's Santamaro. He, he turned him, yeah. Finally, he turned with him there. A little bit of footwork. There's a right hand from Rocco. He waved that hook just to hide, hide the right hand behind it. Sneaky little uppercut there by Rocco. Oh, well, there's another right from Rocco. That's a good shot. I mean, he's taken eight to land one, but the one is pretty good. Hey, just like Rocky. And just enough confidence to give you a little bit of a G up, a little bit more energy. Chris, I, I see similarities to his brother, Kel, you know, who just retired pretty young. He has the championship ability to win a, a vacant strap, but against the best, I think he gets hit too much. Speaking of getting hit too much, blood now pouring out of the left eye, or cut near the left eye of Rocco. But again, Sergio, he is having success. Right hand there connects. Just not as much as he needs. And he's not a big hitter, only six knockouts in his 22 wins. Start his career with a 13-0 record, did Rocco before suffering defeat to Diego De La Hoya, the cousin of Oscar De La Hoya. That was back in May in 2016. Got knocked out in the seventh round. Yeah, and then another, you know, tough physical fight 
that you know was a lot closer than than it should have been with Ricardo Sandoval. Another excellent physical fight, and here is Rocco in another physical fight. But this is a one-sided physical fight. Well, Sandoval's a good fighter. I mean, he can yes, pu punch a bit. Mm -hmm. He's got cannons. It's a good round, though. I think for for Yafa, he's better. Move his head a little bit more in this round. A little more lateral movement from him. Stay off his feet. You gotta punch off that roll. He rolls quite well, simple. He dips his legs, get nice and low, and he rolls. You gotta come you gotta come back with that with a punch. Like I was saying, Barry, they, they want knockouts here in America. Really harsh place, isn't it? Yeah. Yafai putting on a bit of a boxing clinic, but the crowd's still getting restless. Here, here's what I think they're they're going at. It's the fact that Yafai is 100% in control, landing at will. It's not like it's a competitive back and forth fight. So whenever you're landing this cleanly, that easily, you should be able to hurt and put away your guy. Put it, you know, you got to put a, a ribbon on your performance. Uh, the thing about Galal Yafai that it just feels like is missing. He's very good. He's strong, he's technical, but there have been some opportunities where, with Rocco backing up, if Galab would just let his hands go and flurry, you see how close the referee has been watching Rocco these last couple of rounds. When I see that, I think this referee is ready to wave it off. So if Galab Yafai just flurries, I think that'll give him an opportunity to get a stoppage. You've always been a big proponent of that. I think not, I mean, not all knockouts are created equal to make the stoppage. But if a guy is coming forward and throwing punches in bunches, that gives the referee a chance to do it. Yeah, but that's what keeps Santamoro in the fight. He just landed two oh, punches. There's a right hand. Best punch of the fight as Galal tries to smile it off. But again, at the end of every round, Rocco has a ray of sunshine. Just when you think he's out, two punches pulls him back in. Forty seconds left in this one. Every round has looked very similar, but this one a little more ferocious. Both guys punching harder. What well, he doesn't do, Yaffa, is if he faints here now, Santa Moro just lets the punches go. And he falls into the front foot. And then Yaffa has a free shot. You wonder how many rounds the judges will give to Rocco, if any. Ten seconds, guys. Stop at the back. Right hand scores for Rocco again at the end of the round. He successful finishes it with a left hook. But the day belongs to Galal Yafai. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds here in Glendale, Arizona, we go to the judges' score totals. Jesse Reyes, 99 to 91. Steve Gray, 98 to 93. Dennis O'Connell, 97, 93. All three. Your winner, by unanimous decision, he's still undefeated and still the WBC International Flyweight Champion, a couple of rounds Sergio nice to see him get some credit there but the winner was a uh, there was no doubt who won that fight